Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. And yes, I am still down in my living room because we have a house guest and I really don't want to wake up. I'm a morning person, they're not, so I'm trying to be nice. Uh, but we still talk with our experts every week. We start off strong with Mr. Greg Dickerson. How you doing, sir? Doing great, Michael. How are you today? I'm doing great, man. We got a house guest. We're having fun, right? I do these videos. I upload them. We're out and about checking out. Uh, we're, get, we're getting out. So it's a, it's, it's a lot of fun. So it's uh, it's been a good week so far. Awesome. Very cool. Well, one of the things I want to talk about for the investors watching us is you and I have been doing this a while. You and I have seen several market cycles and both change for the negative and change for the positive. And I just want to talk about a changing market because I've been calling for a housing slowdown for a couple of months now. It is actually happening right now at different rates in different cities. And I just want to remind people that uh, changing markets can be both great if you take advantage of the opportunity and you find the motivation, or if you're, if you're almost egotistical and you don't think it applies to you, uh, a changing market can destroy you if you're not careful. So what do, you, what do you think of that? Do you kind of feel the same way or you maybe have a different opinion? No, and it happens fast. I mean, we're seeing the housing market uh, cool off, you know, nationwide. Of course, every market's different. There's, uh, you know, local hotspots. But in general, the housing market is cooling off. So there's a couple of things, you know, that are going on because interest rates are still extremely low, record low. So number one, it's summer. Everybody's traveling. So this time of year, Every year in the summer, the housing market tails off a little bit because people are out there traveling, they're doing things. Last summer was a little different because we had just come off the lockdowns from the pandemic where nobody could you know, show houses or sell them. Mm -hmm. And then realtors were deemed essential. So they were able to start selling again. So there was a little bit of pent up demand June, July uh, during that time frame. People didn't have anything else to do. Everything mm -hmm. was closed, locked down. So they'd go yeah. see houses. People were going to resort areas. So they were buying houses there, you know, getting out of town. So there was a lot of pandemic panic buying mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, a uh, sense of urgency that was created through the pandemic that kind of drove things last year. But this year, people are out there enjoying themselves. So that's one aspect. It's just summer numbers. Housing market always dips a little bit in the summer. Mm -hmm. Number two, um, a lot of buyers are frustrated mm -hmm. because they're getting priced out. So they're just a lot of buyers are saying, you know what, I'm just going to wait. Uh, you know, I've been losing uh, on every offer I make. We're just sick of it. We're going to wait it out. And then the third is housing market has reached all time highs in terms of prices, not necessarily affordability like we looked at last week, but mm -hmm. prices. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of people are just saying, you know what, we're just going to wait till prices come back down to reality and, you know, just kind of check out. So you have all that kind of hitting on a national scale all over the place. So the real question is, what are we going to see in the next few weeks as, you know, people stop traveling and mm -hmm. get back to business and, you know, things like that? Yeah, I, I was lucky enough. One of my my expert on Sundays is in the top 1% of real estate agents in the state of Arizona. So pretty big time, right? And what she shared with us is a couple of, a couple of stats that should, frankly, you know, if you're an investor, if you're an agent, if you're in the real estate business, should should at least shake you to pay attention. She was operating uh, at the beginning of July with 15 active approved buyers that were looking to buy, writing, I mean, not just looky loose, but writing offers, getting outbid, all the stuff that you just referenced. As she's starting August, which August 1st was yesterday when, when she had her interview, she's down to two. Now you may hear that and think 13 people bought, absolutely not. None of the 15 were successful uh, last month of July. What she is saying is A, people are frustrated to your point, B, uh, people have decided that they're just going to rent for the next year. So again, in that case, right, you take somebody who signs a year lease, they're not coming back in August or September. They're done for 10 months, right, before they start looking again. So, so the buyer demand is absolutely changing. The second thing we talked about, because not only is she a top 1% agent, but she is, uh, she, she is part of and married to one of the best investors in the country. And she's saying, you know what? Our flips are sitting longer. They're, they're not only sitting longer, but they're not even getting showings, right? So again, really what I wanted to tie like here is if, hey, if you're, if you're an owner, realize, or if you're a seller, realize what's going on. But also a lot of people that watch this channel are investors. And I want you to realize if you are not appreciating that the market has changed, and if you've been really successful the last 18 months, I want you to be extra careful. Because what happens when the market takes off is it hides bad behavior. It hides slow projects, overbidding, wrong ARVs. The market bails you out, right, Greg? So uh, I just want people to realize uh, 
and to really evaluate their business. Because if you don't appreciate a changing market, your hold times with hard, I mean, hard money could eat you alive if it takes an extra month, right? And if you're an agent and you said, oh my God, I listed my house on Friday and I had no offers by Sunday, what's going on? Folks, we're entering a more balanced market. And uh, the last 18 months has been a lot of pent up demand, a lot of once in a lifetime, hey, I need a second home. I just need people to realize the market's changing. So uh, it can create great opportunity as some of my students have seen, but it also can, it could drive you to bankruptcy if you're not careful. Yeah, it, it changes fast and what doesn't change quickly. So what changes fast is demand in the market mm -hmm. and inventory. Inventory levels are going up. A lot of people are, a lot of sellers are going, man, market's hot, it's time to sell. Okay, when they weren't selling before. So you got a lot of that happening. So that's increasing inventory. You got buyers that are out, they're getting frustrated. You know, so the demand can change very quickly. What doesn't change very quickly is seller's perception of the values that they can get for their houses. Exactly. So that's going to take a little while. So for investors that are watching, yeah, it may seem like it's a great time because houses are sitting, you're going to see days on market go up. So you can go out and start making offers, but the sellers, it hasn't sunk into them yet. What's mm -hmm. really going on. Yeah. Um, and until it becomes more of a six month thing, once that house is on the market, three, four, six months, mm -hmm. then it starts to change, you know, and that's when sellers will start to realize what's going on, but it, it takes time and it could be even a year or more before the sellers realize, wait a minute, we're, the market's changing. You may not be getting, you know, what you thought you could get for your house a year ago or even six months ago or even three months ago. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm telling people August is different than April. I mean, I think it, I mean, it's that close, right? April was one market. August is going to be a different. And really what I want investors, right, that are on the acquisition side to realize is uh, I also think the next, what is it, August now? So the next four months, five months, um, you're going to have a pretty unique opportunity to find motivated sellers because what I think is happening is more listings beget more listings. Uh, most of your, to your point, most sellers will set unrealistic expectations because all they've been hearing from CNBC and Forbes and Wall Street Journal is housing is hot. So they'll put stupid prices on. And then what's going to happen? You're right. It's not a stock market. This stuff doesn't change overnight, doesn't change in an hour, doesn't change in a week. Those listings will age. And then as they age out at 45 days and 60 days, one of two things will happen. One, they're going to call up their agent and yell at them. And they're going to just take their house off the market. People don't appreciate my house. My house is special. We're just going to stay. Great. Not really a seller. Yeah. Number two is price drop motivation because maybe there's a divorce. Maybe there's job movement. Maybe they already bought the next home and they got to get rid of this home and they don't want to be landlords. You're going to find some motivated sellers uh, in the next four months, which is, you know, I, I haven't seen a motivated seller in years. And I think we're going to find them in the next four months. Does that make sense? Yeah, it'll start happening. And, and, you know, so to clarify the messaging to everybody is don't stop making offers, you know, mm -hmm. make offers for houses that days on markets are increasing, but you know, don't expect the sellers to cave in just because you know what's going on and they yeah, don't, exactly. you know, that's number one. Um, you know, number two, don't push the market. So there was a time for a while there where you could push the market a little bit. You could be aggressive if you're flipping or whatever you're doing, you could be a little bit more aggressive on your offers. You got to reduce those um, max maximum offers that you can make now and your end, you know, values that you're looking at, you know, after repair values, you need to adjust those down and be more conservative. And it means you're going to miss some deals, but you know, you're better off missing deals than you are, you know, doing something that's going to cost you and you lose money. Yeah, if you're a flipper or a wholesaler, that was really the second part of the conversation with Laura is if you're a flipper or wholesaler, it's time to look at your business, evaluate the mechanics, uh, because it won't, you won't be bailed out. The market bailed you out for shortcutting the process and being wrong the last year. It won't bail you out the next year. And there's a lot of, a lot of wholesalers, at least in my area, that have essentially been locking up deals because people were overpay. And, and I've been here before. What's going to happen is, is they lock them up their trusted flippers will start to uh, shrink as they hold inventory, right? Flippers who were selling in two or three days now will sell in 30 or 60 days. They're, it's, it's just a different business. And I just want people to realize, because I saw flippers go bankrupt last time, and I don't want that to happen. So I just want, realize, I want people to realize that a changing market, if, if you don't respect it, it'll drive you out of business. Yeah, you always you always have to respect the trend. You have to understand the trend, the you know the momentum in the market, the cycle that you're in, changing cycles. The only caveat that we have in front of us is the Delta variant. You know that's that's flaring up in a lot of areas and creating problems. We don't know what the outcome of that's going to be. We don't know how bad it's going to get. Um, we haven't gotten into the fall yet, so a lot of the you know medical experts are projecting the mm -hmm. big surge, you know, happening 
September ish, you know, uh, mm-hmm. once we get into the fall. And so we'll have to see what that does to things and if that changes things. Um, we know the Fed's not backing off anytime soon. So no. rates are going to stay low. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, we have moratorium on evictions expiring today. So yep. obviously that's going to bring some inventory to the market. Some of those landlords, you know, that couldn't sell because of that are now going to want to sell once they, they get mm-hmm. those situations resolved. Yep. Um, and for anybody listening, if you're, if you're in that situation where you're being evicted um, or if you're a landlord who is in that process, it's not going to happen overnight. The courts are backed up. Mm-hmm. It's going to take some time. Uh, so they're not going to like go in today and bam, the sheriff's knocking on your door tomorrow. You know, there, there's going to be time there. And, and for anybody that's in that position, it's just, you know, it's awful. And, you know, there, there is help out there, you know, with this, the cities and counties and states that, that have funding from the government. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, that hasn't reached everybody like it's supposed to. But it's, yeah. it's a tough situation. But some of those are going to be hitting the market soon. And then you have the uh, forbearance programs expiring and, you know, houses that are either strategically or not in, in default or mm-hmm. you know, the eviction process. So we're going to see some of that stuff come out, but I don't think that's going to have a significant impact on the market anytime soon. No. Yeah. It's, it's months down the line. When I think about the landlords, cause I know a lot of them and I talked to them. I did, I did that landlord survey uh, for the last month or so. Uh, a lot of landlords who are kind of at the end of their kind of traditional time, they're going to, they're going to get the tenants out. Most of them are going to clean them up and they're going to sell to owner occupants, right? Cause I play in the residential side of the equation. They're going to clean them up. They're going to do a full turn and then they're going to sell them owner occupied. So what's going to happen in a lot of markets is uh, affordable rentals, right? Whatever affordable means for your city, the quantity is going to go down, right? We have, uh, we had set policy that hurt mom and pop landlords. Mom and pop landlords make up a lion's share of uh, single family rentals. And unfortunately, you know, they've had enough and they're going to take their, they're going to take their houses off the market, sell to owners. So a lot of people that were, you know, pro eviction moratorium, one of the outcomes is going to be, you're going to have less affordable rentals. Yeah, that's, that's a potential. I mean, I don't think there's any one particular area that, that's going to have a huge, huge impact there, but, um, but yeah, we're going to talk about that in a minute. Who owns the rental houses? In yeah. the country. It's more mom and pop than anything else. Yeah, we actually will make that episode number two. Uh, so before we get to that, Greg, how can people find you and be part of your world? Yeah, gregdickerson.com, all my social media links, YouTube, podcast, all that's on there. I put out content every day on entrepreneurship, real estate, investing, economy, all kinds of things. Yeah, folks, do yourself a favor, follow him, go out, go to his website, follow him on YouTube, his channel's blowing up. He covers a lot of things that I do not. So I follow him and check out what he's putting out. Greg, you do great work, man. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Michael. Uh-huh.